Hi everybody, Robin here, back again, but not with news, exactly. Last week, I got the chance to ask David Christ, who is the Group Vice President and General Manager of the Toyota Division here in the United States, a few questions, and one thing in particular was definitely on my mind. With all the new body-on-frame trucks and SUVs that Toyota has been coming out with, starting with the Tundra, none of them have had naturally aspirated V8s or V6s. We have a turbocharged V6 and a turbocharged V6 hybrid in the Tundra, and we have four-cylinder, turbocharged four-cylinder and turbocharged four-cylinder hybrids in the Land Cruiser and Tacoma. We also have the V6 hybrid in the new Sequoia. We also have the turbocharged four-cylinder hybrid in the 4Runner. And every time that I do a review or even a news piece on one of these, there's comments about losing the V6, losing the V8, and how that's a detriment to the new truck or SUV. So I asked Mr. Christ, from his perspective, what does he think of all this? And basically he said he understands that that is something that a lot of people liked and miss about these new products. But then he added something. If you really want a naturally aspirated V6 or a naturally aspirated V8, your choices are dwindling. And that forced me to think and look into it. So if you consider the five brands that offer body on frame trucks and SUVs, I'm thinking about GM, which is Chevrolet and GMC, Ford, Ram, Nissan, and Toyota. Only the Nissan Frontier offers a naturally aspirated V6 in its mid-sized truck anymore. Ram doesn't build a mid-sized truck at all at the moment, and the Colorado slash Canyon and the Ranger do not offer naturally aspirated V6s. You can get a turbocharged V6 in the Ranger, but it is a much smaller displacement, 2.7 liters instead of 3.8 in the Frontier. The Tacoma is a four-cylinder only, but it is a turbocharged four-cylinder, and there is a hybrid option, and if you get the hybrid option, it offers up to 465 pound-feet of torque. Going to the full-size trucks, the options spread out just a little, but Nissan is not building the Titan for 2025 and beyond, and Ram is now six cylinders only. Toyota is also V6 only, also turbocharged. So that leaves Ford and GM. Ford offers one engine, the five liter V8. But bear in mind that that engine is the second least powerful one they offer. It makes 400 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque, that compares to the turbocharged three and a half liter V6 or EcoBoost, it makes 400 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. And then the hybrid version makes the most 430 horsepower and 570 pound feet of torque. So that means it is General Motors and General Motors alone that offers two naturally aspirated V8s and the larger of the two, the 6.2 liter, is the one that offers the most horsepower and torque. Those figures are 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. And if you look at the body-on-frame SUVs that are out there, the story is pretty similar. Briefly, I will say that when you get to the Super Duty trucks, things change pretty quick there. There's a lot of V8s in that category, but we're still talking about a big decline in big displacement. So the next logical question is, why? And the answer is actually pretty easy regulations. With ever-increasing emission standards and fuel economy standards, it is harder and harder to meet those requirements with traditional engines, we'll call them. Smaller displacement engines, transmissions with more gears, and hybrid help make a huge difference in overall emissions and fuel economy numbers, at least according to the government. And Toyota alone has spent billions of dollars on hybrid development, battery development, and these new engines. Conversely, they've spent virtually nothing on developing new V8s, new naturally aspirated V6s. Everything, all the momentum is going in one direction. And that's not just Toyota, that is all the different manufacturers. So with all of that considered, Chris basically said, with all of these regulations, there's basically no reason to continue to develop those big engines. 
There's another element to this. What is the real desire that you want from an engine, especially in a truck? You want power and torque to feel confident that you can carry or tow sometimes very heavy loads. Hybrids have a big advantage there. Electric motors have the ability to produce torque at effectively zero speed, right when you get moving. And they can also respond very quickly to your inputs. That is a huge advantage for trucks, to be able to get a lot of torque to the wheels very quickly. The Land Cruiser, for example, comes standard with a hybrid max powertrain. It makes 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. Those are fantastic numbers to be able to maneuver at slow speed off-road. And when it comes to the Tundra, the hybrid delivers 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. Of course, the majority of that does come from the twin-turbocharged 3.4-liter V6. So more and more, naturally aspirated V6 and V8 engines just simply can't match the power delivery, the power outputs that turbocharged and hybrid engines can. And again, Toyota is not alone here. Ford's top of the line engine for the F-150 is a hybrid. All engines offered in the Ram are six cylinders and the top of the line engine is a high output version of a twin turbocharged inline six engine called the Hurricane. And while Chevrolet does offer the 6.2 liter V8 in its Silverado, it also has the Silverado EV, and the Silverado EV makes way more power and torque than that V8 ever could. All that said, I still get the appeal to a naturally aspirated V6 or V8 engine. They're much simpler engines. They're fewer moving parts. They're a little bit less dependent on computer control. All those things have appeal, especially if you're your own shade tree mechanic. But with all the regulations going in one direction and critically all the development going in that direction, I just don't see a path for naturally aspirated V8s and V6s to make any kind of comeback. And I'm really sorry if that bums some people out, but there is some good news. Development will continue. Reliability will improve and power outputs will continue to increase. These things are gonna become quite powerful, and I think quite a bit of fun as well in the process. I'm Robin Warner, thank you very much for watching. And I wanna tell you, I also wrote a story about this same topic. It's on my website, viewsonvehicles.com. I will have a link to that story in the description. That story will have all the direct quotes from David Christ about this topic, and you can get a more full understanding of what he had to say. I will also have links to reviews I've done on the newer Toyota products so you can get a sense of how I think these new vehicles work. Okay, goodbye for now.